systems. And what I found interesting about hair restoration is the physician does his part of the work, but the, phys the surgical assistant dissects and uh, places grafts. And if she or he doesn't do her job correctly, everything that physician did in a first phase of hair transplantation can be ruined by poor graft dissection and graft placement. Um, when start, someone starts uh, hair transplantation practice, usually they don't have enough uh, patients to provide enough practice for assistance. So what I did is I divided hair transplant um, training program into pre-patient and a patient program uh, training. Usually the training is done on um, live tissue. If someone is starting a practice, they don't have enough live tissue, so I developed this pre-patient uh, training so that someone can develop dexterity and awareness of hair transplantation uh, before even starting on a live tissue. So um, the challenge was not enough patients, not enough tissue, um, being nervous, someone starting to dissect tissue on a patient is nervous and um, it takes long time for someone to develop skills if someone starting practice has occasional uh, patient in occasional opportunities for practice. So there will be a phase one, phase one, two pro training and Marion Parsley will teach us or teach you about phase two pro training. And then I also will address today the learning objectives for a phase one training and outline the process itself. So the most trainings are performed, as I said, on live patient and what happens when a new person starts learning how to dissect or place grafts they are very nervous not to damage the tissue or to hurt the patient and also they don't want to ask questions because they don't want to sound ignorant in front of the patient. So the pre-patient training on a dummy will alleviate these concerns. The uniqueness about hair, assisting in hair transplantation comes from manual dexterity. So the person has to have a good hand and eye coordination and physical stamina to sit for hours and dissect <coughs> grafts, it requires physical stamina. But also there has to be a mental aptitude for tedious work. Not everybody is capable of sitting up for hours and dissecting grafts, so um, this pre-patient training will allow someone to discover whether they are good for it or not. And um, during this training, we're going to introduce critical thinking, we're going to teach what, is, what to do, what not to do, so that certain person start thinking along the lines of providing a quality. So the phase one training in my um, practice or my teaching takes about two to three weeks and um, the person will learn about the procedure, learn about the tasks, and it will be a practicing cutting and placing on a dummy. And then a phase two takes about six to 12 months and where, person, where assistant is now participating in a surgery, working on a live tissue, and now working with the instruments, setting up for surgery, sterilizing. The phase one training has two steps, which is first one is on a dummy, and I will later demonstrate how to cut and how to practice cutting. And the, um, this first step is to provide the opportunity for a person who is learning dissection and placement to develop proper hand movement, holding instruments correctly, and um, understand body position. And the second step of this training will be done on using photos of the live tissue. So the person before even, the assistant, who, before even touching a live tissue, will know what to look for. We'll talk about follicular units, about slivers. So there will be a certain concepts already introduced in a pre-patient training. So the cutting on a, in placing on a dummy, what, and I'll demonstrate this later, so the objective would be for someone to hold the blade and the forceps, they imagine that this is a tissue, cut slivers, and we, everybody will have an opportunity to practice this so you can develop the hand movement, and practice making even slivers in the foam and then dissect the sliver into even pieces. So the idea behind is for someone to be able to guide the blade, hold the forceps firm but gently, because if someone pushes too hard on the foam, or the, it's all, the foam will show. And also, to be able to develop a certain size, every graft has to have a specific size to fit in a specific site. 
So dissecting foam um, slivers into halves and halves into quarters will allow someone to start practicing this tedious work. And then the same thing, I take styrofoam head, um, I put a swim cap on it because you can't insert anything into styrofoam. So I pad my styrofoam head with Play-Doh and then I put a swim cap on the top so when I make sites there's a given layer underneath and then I can take foam pieces that I made kind of grafts and the person can insert that into the styrofoam head. So the idea behind it is for someone to learn how to hold the tiny piece, how to hold the forceps and insert it in the site. So developing hand movement in awareness of the body position and body position vis-a-vis -vis the patient. So these two images just demonstrate we, what we do, we, I attach the styrofoam head to a patient's chair and then the assistant, so if I imagine this is my patient's head in a chair, so I will train one assistant to position herself from one side, then show working from the back and then coming from the side because the hand movement will change, the forceps we we'll use will change depending where we are positioning on the body. So all this is introduced without being in the presence of the patient, so the person who is trained feels comfortable to learn I, as a trainer, feel comfortable to correct or guide the assistant without being intimidated by patient's presence. I always focus on quality, and so at every step, whatever I'm teaching, I'm always making sure that the person who is trained is aware of quality. For me, the quality is based on knowledge that is, knowing the difference between what to do and what not to do, what is correct and what is incorrect action. If I only teach correct actions and someone does incorrect, they don't know how to correct themselves because they don't have the guidelines. So I always explain why correct is good and then I also point out what is incorrect. And so for example, holding forceps, they're very um, delicate forceps, I always explain they have to be held firm yet gentle. And the reason I'm using foam, and I'll demonstrate this later, when someone squeezes on a foam, the foam will lift, which will tell me the person cutting will crash the tissue, which is a wrong movement. So all through this training, I will kind of point out what to do and what not to do. Um, and everyone in room will have the opportunity tomorrow afternoon to practice cutting foam and, and placing and just kind of get the feel of what it feels like to cut and then you'll have the opportunity to do the same thing with a live tissue or a real tissue. Um, the other thing I mentioned something earlier, I also um, raise the awareness of body positioning. Everyone t working on a tedious work gets cramped because they are so concentrated that um, I teach while we are cutting foam to relax the shoulders. There will be long hours of cutting the person has to start developing right body positioning during cutting. The same thing um, if this is my patient's head and the assistant is putting hand in front of patient's face, I have to make um, trainee aware that patient is a live person, that we have to be positioned in a way that we never um, kind of put patient in a position that he is 